Well, I've made my decision on what my next daily driver is going to be, but it wasn't easy. On one hand, the Tesla doesn't use any gas, and on the other, the CTS-V, well, it uses a little gas. The Tesla's also very quiet. This car, not so much. The Tesla also has every driving aid available. It can literally drive itself, but it can't do a burnout. And, and this car, it can. The Tesla is responsible, it's comfortable, it's spacious for the entire family. Well, so is the CTS-V, I guess they're the same in that regard. But what's made my decision to get rid of a practically perfect car has nothing to do with practicality at all. It's simply that I'm bored with the Tesla. I've been daily driving a Model S now for about four years, and I'm sure I'll have another fast EV in the future, but I just want something new or much older in this case. I want to daily drive a cool car that makes cool noises and that makes me feel like I'm leaving for a cruise night with my friends, even if it's six o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday and I'm leaving the house to go put 12 hours in at the shop. I want to daily drive a car that makes me turn around and smile every time I park it and the V wagon gives me that and much more. Plus the Tesla is still depreciating and the V wagon isn't and the insurance is $1,200 cheaper per year for the CTS. And I plan on not only doing more performance modifications to the V, but also fuel economy modifications like I did on my 40 MPG EcoVet because I'm a big fan of having my deep dish Chicago pizza and eating it too. So we have a ton to do in this video to make my CTS V wagon an even more legit streetcar, and you know that's gonna include some modifications like these right here. Some factory Recaro seats that I just got in the mail out of a super low mileage wagon, a 2014. Look at these, so nice. And if you guys are interested in buying my P100D, this has the ludicrous plus mode and the now $15,000 full self-driving option. It had an MSRP of over $150 thousand uh, dollars this car will be listed on modsandmiles.com so depending on when you're viewing this video it'll either be for sale as we speak or it's already sold so either way you can click on that link and either buy it or see what it's sold for all right the ctsv is going under the knife but we can't do that with all of the dirt from the 700 mile road trip back from Kansas. We have to wash this car. And let me know in the comments section, guys, what color brake calipers should I go with? I'm gonna keep the factory wheels, but I do have to repaint these. Someone did a really bad job. Should I stick with the yellow? I, I kind of like it. I think it looks really cool with this color, but let me know what color brake calipers. All right, this car is so nasty. This is gonna feel good. These wheels are so bad. Okay, hopefully all this dirt actually comes off. I really like these wheels. I wanna keep them, especially for daily driver duties. They're not perfect. They have little nicks here and there, and, that, and that's fine. Oh, these are gonna clean up. Well, this is interesting. Look at this. These two spokes right here look to be like painted silver, and then this is what the factory finish should look like. That's weird. Oh yeah, look at this. This is painted silver and this isn't. Okay, we'll have to fix that. All right, the V-Wagon is all cleaned up and looking pretty and in good company with the Turbo Trans Am WS6. And I brought in the E55 AMG wagon for wagon moral supports while this goes under the knife. We gotta fix up these headlights here. This one is damaged. It looks like maybe a rock hit it. And that was also replaced in the accident. So you can see the lens is a little bit more clear than this most likely original lens. Uh, but I got both of them for about 120 bucks. So let's remove this front bumper and replace them. All right, so we have to remove this front bumper cover to get these headlights out, which is a little annoying, but typical of a modern car. And I think we got to start off with this plastic cover right here. And right, I'm a little bit nervous to take any of this stuff apart, especially on this side, because this is where it was hit. I kind of just, I don't want to see if it's bad. Don't look, I'll tell you. Just look away. Is it, how is it, Peter? Oh, Alex. 
Alex. It's that was terrible. A, is it good? Uh, it's clean. Yay! I'll work on this side. You work on that side. <laughs> All right. This looks original so far. We're missing a fender bolt right here. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it got a new fender and a new headlight. But I don't think the wreck was that bad. I mean, this this doesn't. If if this was not repainted then this looks like it's the same paint, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't think this was that bad. I think this is a fender, a couple doors, a headlight. Uh, I don't even think the front bumper was replaced in this accident, so that's good. Look at the sticker on the radiator, 2011. So this is the original radiator, so that wasn't even damaged. We're gonna go ahead and lift the CTS up. Uh, we'll remove these wheels. I think it'll make it easier for us to get this bumper off. Is it just leaking from here? Let's see. Yeah, it is cracked. That's right. Oh, well, yeah, look at this. They already tried to fix this. This wheel is very jacked up. Look at this spoke right here. They sanded this down and it's like deformed now. I don't know. I might get a new wheel. It spun its last revolution. Well, it's spinning right now, but you know what I mean? These are wild, really good pads. The rotors have quite the ridge though. I think I am gonna have to replace these. And if we're gonna be powder coating the brake calipers as well, we might as well just do it all at once. Made in Italy. Just like part of you. Just like me. Non ti preoccupare, sei bella così. Uh, let's pull this guy back. Yeah, it looks like we just gotta loosen up that and maybe that one. I think we can remove the front bumper cover and all of this plastic at once. All right, we got these up top. Okay, got the headlight washers unplugged. Okay, I'm gonna clamp off the windshield washer hose. And there's our whole front clip. That's it, that was easy. Oh, look at that, we can see the cone for the air filter and it's all isolated from the engine's heat, so it's not a hot air induction. And we can take a look at frame rails and crash bar. And I'm gonna say all this stuff Looks very original, bugs and all. It looks like there's three tens holding this headlight on. All right, one plug, nice and easy. I gotta say, I've always loved the design of these CTS headlights. They remind me of a diamond and we're gonna make this one sparkle just like the diamonds on BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com started in 1999 and is the original online jeweler. They can help find you the perfect gift with expert guidance and a massive selection of super high quality jewelry at the best prices. Every order is insured and arrives in a discreet box so not to give away the surprise. I wanted to surprise my wife with a necklace and it felt so good knowing that they have a 30-day return policy and guaranteed service and repair for life. My wife's about to leave. I'm gonna go surprise her right now. This came from BlueNile.com in one day. Their shipping is amazing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. She's about to leave. I got you something. Just to make my car faster, Alex. No! What's it <laughs> It's nothing. Just check it out. Beautiful, thank you. Happy early Mother's Day. Oh, this is so beautiful. Isn't Alex. it? Put it on, you gotta oh put it on before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold on, I have to give you a hug. It looks so good online, even better in person. This is stunning, I love it so much. I usually get car parts, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> and this was just such a surprise and I feel so special, thank you. My wife's taking off in the Mustang. Love you, babe. Love you. <laughs> if you guys wanna give a gift, that says how you feel, then head over to BlueNile.com and use coupon code LEGITSTREET to get $50 off your next perfect jewelry gift of $500 or more. So a big thanks to BlueNile.com for making this whole thing happen and for sponsoring this video. All right, I got this one out. Oh, I'm scared to see what's in here. Okay, so this is the structure of the car uh, that the fender basically covers up. Yeah, it looks all factory to me, guys. This wasn't bad. All right, guys, with both headlights out, let me show you the oven that I constructed with my own bare hands. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know this complicated contraption that I built. It's made of a space-age polymer, 
It's brown. Now it requires a thermal event device like so, and it uses a machined intake into the polymer for a very precise fit. And you put the headlights in there, you cover it up in the sealed chamber, and then this is where you insert the military grade temperature gauge. You might want to stand back, Peter. This is intense. Feel that? Now I've devised a diverter baffle, which once installed will separate the two thermal events. And that way we don't melt the headlight down. We just need the heat around it and that will loosen up all of the goo that holds this lens on. Uh, but first we have to remove some T15 screws and these go directly into the lens. Now we're gonna remove this bracket as well. And that's it, we have all the screws out and we're just gonna go ahead and place it in here like so. And we don't have to remove anything else from this headlight. Just imagine that these things have been tested in the deserts of Arizona to hold up to a couple hundred degrees so they wouldn't melt down in the real world. So there's no reason why we can't do both of these at the same time. The thermal bionic chamber is large enough. All right, now we'll close the top lid. There we go. Uh, Peter, get the duct tape. All right, with everything sealed up, we are going to bake. And you can see this is going up already. We're past 80. And we'll get it up to eh, probably like 150, we'll check it, it should be okay. All right, we're right at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna let this bake for about 20 minutes. Let's go get some seats out. Yes. These are fine seats, they're in really good condition, but these are the base model seats. So you could get these in all the normal CTSs and they're okay. But the fact that this car had a Recaro seat option is super cool. And I think the Recaro seats look much better and I hear they're actually quite comfy. Let's. We should probably just go test that first. Yes. So I found these seats on one of the Facebook classified groups and I bought these from a really nice guy named Jason. Shout out to Jason out there. He is building a crazy, crazy V right now. Um, but he told me he left me a gift in one of the boxes. Oh, this is gonna be it. Ooh, a shifter. Let me see. Oh, nice. It's an Alcantara V shifter knob. Oh, that's awesome. Sweet. Thanks, Jason. That's awesome, man. Appreciate that. He really took a lot of time to package up these seats for me. It was, it was just really nice. And then this is one of the heated and cooled seat switches that I need because the car doesn't have cooled seats from the factory. Um, so I ordered another one of these and a control unit that should be in soon too. But look at how well he packaged this. This is beautiful. So this is the driver's seat. Let's see what it looks like. All right, moment of truth here on the bolsters. Oh, you got it. Me. They smell seriously brand new, no exaggeration. So I think the story was, is these came out of a 14 CTSV wagon that was turned into a really fast like drag car and they put lightweight seats in it. Look at this door side bolster, it's perfect. Wow. Oh, oh yeah, this is, this is what I want on a daily basis. Uh, it's nice, it's just very nice and bolstered, but not too much, it's nice and comfy. It's a pretty decently heavy seat too, but yeah, we're doing this. Would you say it's the Cadillac of seats? It's the Cadillac of seats, yes. <laughs> Ooh, what is this? Oh, look at this. Cool. Lots of buttons. It says Recaro right here. How cool is that? Well, we got up to 210, which is a little much. So I'll open up one of the air release ports and we turned the thermal heat event device down a bit. All right, let's see how we take these seats out. Okay. I was expecting some bolts right here. Where are they? Yeah, look at this. They hook in. So the front doesn't have any bolts. It literally just hooks. We just gotta get to the back. We have to remove this bolt here. All right, there's that. Okay, easy enough. All right, I should have bolts now. Yay, big ones. And we have this, some kind of fishing device. Who knows what we'll find under these seats. Don't break, yay. Okay, gigantic Torx. Okay, just gotta disconnect some stuff. All right, we'll start unplugging. All right, now we have to tilt this forward and then up, I think, to get it out of those slots. Oh, right, there we go. All right, so there's that. Okay, this will stay with the car. It should be it. I dare to eat this, Peter. 
Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, organic. It's, it's organic. It's a salad. You got it. I'm not eating it. This is good for you. Like, ugh. How was it? You got the taste. That's enough. I don't want to kill you. How was it? Was it? Fiber. It was fibery. It's fiber. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like Metabucil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make me regular. <laughs> Be careful when removing seats from cars because the seat frames are sharp and they can scratch up your dash and center console and whatnot. This one's not too bad though. Okay. Nice and easy. All right. Yeah, nothing too exciting in here. This thing's actually really clean. Doesn't smell, the carpets are nice. It's a nice car, 69,000 miles now. Look at this factory GM goodness in this beautiful color. Love it. I checked on the headlights and they're not gooey enough to pull apart. So we're gonna give them about another 20 minutes. Uh, so while we wait, let's go install this passenger Recaro seat. Well, while we got the seat out, we might as well vacuum. <laughs> Vacuumed up quite nicely, but there's a couple little stains. So eh, while we're in here, let's let's carpet clean. Oh, see, this smells so good in here. All right, before we get that seat inside, we need to check on our lights. All right, so here's our goo, and this is some tough goo, I gotta say, from GM. We're gonna score it, though. See if we can get it to come off. Yeah, on the Mercedes-Benz cars that I've done, this stuff is just oozing out at this point. But this is some tough goo. Yeah, you wanna be careful because you don't wanna damage the body. Oh, she's coming, though. Okay. Yeah, so this is definitely a different sealant than I'm used to. But it's coming apart. Not bad. I love the overspray on this headlight. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so we have two more screws on the inside right here and here. And I think we have another one here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, goodbye lens. All right, it's actually pretty easy to do on these. Not bad. All right, we gotta do the second one really quick before it gets too cold. Okay, just be gentle if you're gonna use a screwdriver like I'm doing. I'm just using it in the very beginning so we can get underneath. Then we switch to plastic. is the really bad lens. And yeah, maybe this could have been buffed out, but for about 50 bucks a pop, it's definitely worthwhile to replace. All right, so right now we're gonna get rid of this old silicone. So we're just gonna kind of cut along it. It's pretty hard. So you can also use a razor blade to do this and then a screwdriver just to kind of dig it out even more. Just don't crack the housing. You wanna do this part when it's cold. So this is the next day right now. Everything is nice and cool. And I'll pretty much just start cracking off and you want to get all of this off. This will never reseal again. And we'll grab some pliers and just start pulling it out like that. Oh yeah. So satisfying. Get out of here. All right, after about a half hour, you have a pile that looks like this. And it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult to dig out of here, but you got to do it. So our channel is now clean of all this really hard sealant and we need to install something a lot more malleable so that our lens will squish in and seal out any moisture or water. What we're using is called Butyl. It's very, very flexible and it's a great sealant for headlight lenses. And we're just gonna go ahead and put it in the channel. Here's what the headlight looks like with the Butyl installed. And it fits in the groove pretty well, but we're gonna heat it up right now so it'll get in there a little bit better. While that's baking, we have to install this into our new lens. 
Alright, this fits in just like that. Let's turn this guy on. Woo, that feels good. Alright, don't forget to plug these guys in. Oh, that stuff is gooey. Look at that. Nice. Now we're just gonna push this on. You kind of only get one chance at this. So make it count. I mean, you don't really get one chance at it, but you don't want to have to take this apart again. We're never going to get water in this guy. It is sealed. Now we're going to get our screws in. And this will pull this together even more. Don't fully tighten any of them yet. Because these are going to draw it in as well. So you just want to make sure they're all even. Here she is. Complete. New lens. Sealed up. This is going to look so good in the car. Um, so I ordered the lenses like a month ago and we got the box in and I opened it up just now to do this and don't do not do that. Always open the boxes when they come in the mail. There was only one lens. So I reached out uh, to the person that sold me the lens and he said the other lens is in the mail and it should have been here a week ago. So I don't know. He promises it'll be here tomorrow now. Anyway, let's move on to a bunch of other stuff. With both the passenger seats out, uh, we just figured out that we have to do some wiring modification. So this main plug is identical on both. So that's nice. But at some point in the life of the second gen CTS, they changed the airbag connector from this to this on the 14 Recaro seat. So we need to swap this harness over to that seat. That way we don't have to mess with anything on the body harness. I removed the seat back of the original seat so we can get to two airbag squibs. So we're gonna pop up this little orange guy and then you can gently pry this off. So there's one part of the harness we need. And we can fish it through here. There we go. Look at that. Ah, oh, he just got, what, what is a sliver of metal from that has gone inside of my body? Okay, look at that. Wonderful. Did I ever tell you how I don't bleed? I actually have Wolverine healing-like properties. You never told me that and it's kind of creepy. That's true. Yeah. This is our second ignition squib we need to pop out. Who invented the word squib? It's weird. Is it, is it marine life? Yeah, it was a marine biologist who invented that word. He wanted it to transcend into the automotive genre. A right, little tedious work here but we just have to get this harness out of the corrugated tube and there's lots of tape. Remember I said I couldn't bleed? That's, I don't even know where this injury came from. It's just dry skin. Don't worry, it'll, it'll heal up in seconds. There we go. Here are the wires we need. After lots of tape cutting, we have a 2011 SRS airbag harness for the passenger seat. Cool. So these ends are identical and I don't really think there's much of an advantage to removing the harness out of the Recaro. I think we can just save ourselves a ton of disassembly and just run this along next to it. So I'll move this over. Okay. And we lock it in. Okay. Cool. That one's plugged in and we'll just run this along the other one. There we go. Now we have the Recaro seat back off so we can get to this right here. Here you can see the cooling fans for the seats. And then I believe there's one or two in the bottom. And there she is. So this one is for the side airbag. All right, fishing this guy through and we'll plug this harness in right here. Click, click, we're good. So that is now plugged in, good to go. And we'll run this through the channel and we'll click all this stuff on just like factory. No one was here before. There's just an extra airbag squib. We'll just never hurt anybody. There we go. Wiring harness is complete on the Recaro seat and you really wouldn't know anything is going on here. So here is our factory plug and tucked inside of here is the other factory plug. So we'll just leave that right here. This covers up all of this stuff anyway and everything is nicely wrapped, secured and I use some loom so everything looks really nice and factory. So anyway, we can go back in with this seat now. It's time. It's time for the passenger Recaro seat. I got the seat back back on and the wiring's done. Okay, yeah, we're good. Oh man, yeah, it's a Recaro seat, but it's, it's not light. That's definitely not what we're going for here. Be very, very careful, Alex. Yeah, doing seats is always fun. I would always get so nervous at the dealer because I was working on like brand new Mercedes, you know, sometimes 100,000, $150,000 cars. And I'm like, you make one little nick 
in any of this stuff and it's it's bad news i never did though all right here we go okay Whew. all right i'm so gonna line up these front hooks um first we'll plug everything in all right that goes on okay nice and factory bam we have to just kind of do one of these to get it to hook in there we go okay let's do a function test here everything is bolted in now wow we gotta clean the seat up itself but cool what's nice is the back seat and the door panels are the same they have the alcantara inserts and everything so it just matches 100 percent all right let's check out the lumbar on here can't hear it's very quiet oh yep that's going up cool oh yeah so much lumber support i am a happy camper right now crystal red metallic tint coat v wagon with heated and cooled recaros I mean, does it get any better than this i don't know i don't know if it does so we found out i was a little upset about the fact that it doesn't have the pano sunroof um, but then in doing some research most of the wagons didn't and i wonder if it's because it looks weird on a car that's not black because then you get these black kind of squares cut into the roof of a cool color i don't know but yeah most most people did not get the sunroofs on the wagons there's a lot that can make up for that though here that's for sure i think there's like 500 things under the hood that can make up for that yeah yeah and we're gonna make more things under the hood to make up for that <laughs> <laughs> did you ever just look for faces and things like that's like a scream mask face look at it what are you talking about and he's like ah! uh, i was thinking it was a robot it's got the eyes there yeah hello pita where is the bolt for me? Where is the bolt? That's, my, the bolt? that's my robot accent. <laughs> that's a great question. We found the bolt for our little robot seatbelt. That's too, way too far forward. <laughs> I don't actually sit. <laughs> oh, this is nice. With all this lumbar stuff, it's like a built-in chiropractor. Basically, mm -hmm. yes. Fix your posture. Oh, this is nice. I wish you guys could sit here with me. It'd be kind of weird, but, you know, like I would get out of the seat and then you could <laughs> test it out. I wish you guys would sit here on Alex's <laughs> lap. <laughs> cool. Obviously, we still have to replace this driver's seat, which we're going to get to. But before that, I'm going to remove all of this right here. We have to put in some new switches to add in the cooled seat option that this car never had. And I'm gonna install a device that connects to the factory screen. And if it works the way they claim, it should make this like a new car, like have a bunch of new cool features like a modern car. And then the interior is gonna be much, much improved after that. Definitely stuff you'd want for a legit daily driver. All right, so we're gonna retain this screen with the old Cadillac logo that pops up. This has gotta be one of the first cars to do this. For GM. But this screen is very, very basic. Uh, it does have an aux input. There's no Bluetooth. The navigation is ancient. You basically would never want to use this. And this car came out in 08. So it's a 2008 infotainment system. So we are going to upgrade that. But I love this factory look. I think this is really elegant. I like these knobs. They sell some aftermarket units that are a big screen like in a Tesla, but it replaces all of this. And I think it's just kind of cheap in this car. So I want to keep the factory screen but I want it to do cooler stuff. So anyway, let's disassemble. All right, so I have never taken apart this interior, but I believe it is mostly clipped in. I love this carbon fiber lookalike type stuff that they used. I might end up getting that wrapped in something that looks like real carbon fiber. We'll see, I don't know. All right, so we're gonna pop these out. these guys out as well. Does this an illumination strip? Yeah, it looks like it, but what what in the world would this illuminate? It's not like this is yeah. see-through or anything. Huh. Huh. Okay, and there's nothing on this side. That's weird. Yeah, that's really weird. This should now pop up. We leave the screen in, I believe. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna disconnect some stuff. 
that guy there. All right, that's disconnected. This guy comes off. Oh, money. Money, yay. Wait, get off my Ricardo seats. <laughs> Dirty money. Dirty money. All right, next up, we're gonna install this module that's going to give us Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a bunch of modern features. So we'll see how that all works. I've used some really cheap aftermarket radios and all that stuff ends up being really kind of more of a gimmick. It freezes and it's just a pain in the butt. So we'll install this and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. I had the battery disconnected for the seats. We plugged it back in to get the shifter back and now we've disconnected it once more. We have to remove this screen. Don't fall. Fall on me, fall on me. Is that a real sign? Call on me. Call on me, fall on me. Okay, we need magnets in this world. We have magnets in the toolbox, but it's it's too far away. Oh, skill, skill and precision right there. You did that on purpose? Yes, I did. Okay. Wow, all right. So we have to unplug this blue guy and then we have a jumper cable. This is for the display. So then we'll plug this in for a jumper. It goes there. So it says we can install this in the glove box or it says advanced installers can install it behind the glove box. Peter, are, are we advanced? What's the opposite of advanced? Disadvanced? <laughs> <laughs> I think I made that word up. Disadvanced, that should be, that should be a word. We're advanced though, right? I Let's be advanced. You know what? Let's... The test is if we can install that behind the oh, glove box. Then so we'll know we're advanced. Then we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't drop, don't drop, don't drop, don't drop. Screen is reinstalled. Uh, we have to pop this out now. Does that not look like a frog to you? <laughs> Peter sees faces and everything now. It's called He's, periodelia. Yes, it's or, a satellite radio frog. <laughs> oh wow, there is a bag of snakes. Oh right yes. Here. Okay, now we just need to intercept one of these connectors. I think it's this really big one. Okay, nice. Don't drop the frog. We're gonna feed this harness right into that Peter hand right there. Disconnect that from the factory, and this is meant for this CTS. So all this is plug and play. We shouldn't have to splice anything. So that goes there. Now this one goes back in there. Now the fun part of trying to get this all to go back in with a ton more added wire. I'm holding some of this harness out of the way. And yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. Next, we have to plug this guy in here and this mic cord into here. There we go. So then there's a bunch of options here. You can run USBs, HDMI out, HDMI in. So to control that screen, we need to put this stuff back. And before we do that, we have to swap over some new buttons and a control unit. So I got this off of eBay for like 130 bucks um, because it comes with the control unit and the buttons. And then I get some extra stuff if I ever need it. And we just have to remove some screws. The control unit's different for the heated and cooled seats. And you can't just program the other control unit to make it work. Yeah, this one's in rough shape. Disconnect these guys. Oh, wait a minute. Am I missing the most obvious ones? Oh. <laughs> if both of us messed up, does that mean we're twice as dumb? Yes. So many screws, guys. I have to go to the bathroom. Too bad, Peter. All right, please remove yourself. too soon it's not coming out oh it's coming out there we go all right this is what we needed i definitely do not want these buttons they're all kind of jacked up 1000 screws later i'm too old for spongebob i don't really i never watched that in my life oh gosh that's disgusting are those bed bugs Dude, that's gross yeah 
I wonder if this was out of a flood car. I've seen worse, but great. That's disgusting. Look, look, look at it in the slot. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Look at these screens. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, it looks like somebody dumped coffee on it. It's coffee spilled. That's probably what that is. All right. Upon further investigation, I uh, I don't think I'm going to use this module. This is junk. I think I need to return this. Um, I think this has had some kind of water damage or coffee damage or something like that. And it is quite a bit of work to swap over the buttons and swap over the whole back of this. Yeah, I think for now we'll test out and see how uh, our addition to the radio works, but I'll have to order up a new one of these. I mean, look at these screens. They're rusted. This is no good. So, yeah, I'll just have to get a new one. Yeah, it happens. Cleaning up the area that we're going to put the module because we're expert installers and we're going to hide it. That's an advanced cleaning procedure you just witnessed. Nice. That's advanced. Okay, now we can attach the module. Can you guys see where we hid the module? See it yet? See it yet? No, because we are expert installers. It's right back here. We found a nice little cubby for it and we wrapped it in foam. So there it is, all plugged in and it's not gonna get in the way of the glove box at all. Let's plug this guy back into our factory piece. Slide this in too. They already accepted my return of the other one. So that's nice, now I gotta find a new one. Um, but with that, we have everything plugged in. Major of four legs or more, and you'll get up to 20. Okay. Audio works. All right. So this looks like our normal screen. V line. It's working. <laughs> Hope it doesn't take that long every time. All right. Cool. So now we have Spotify, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. All right. So right now I'm just going to try and Bluetooth connect my Android phone. I love Android phones. I've tried to go to the iPhone twice now, and I've returned both of them within the two week return period. I want to have an iPhone because we edit on MacBook Pros, um, but I just don't like it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, guys. Android or Apple? And why? Yeah, and why? Why? All right, found my phone. Pairing. Yep. Oh, look at that. Unlock. It's on. Yeah, okay. So my phone's connected. Cool. Set up your car screen. I've never done this before. I've heard really good things, though, about Android Auto. No way. This is what I was listening to last year. A little save enabled. Does it work? All right, audio works. I can't play this or save enable will monetize this video for me. But sweet, this is awesome. All right, now we can just add a bunch of apps to this and we are good to go. Oh, you can watch yourself on YouTube. That would be sweet. Oh, that's YouTube music. Oh, I'm sure we could add it though. Oh, this is really cool. So I can customize everything that's gonna be on the screen in my car uh, with my phone. Sweet. This is the home screen. So we can add a bunch of apps or plugins right here as well. Um, I have a lot of playing with this to do. Um, but in the next video, we'll have the new controls and everything. And we'll wrap this all up. And I have a little surprise for the steering wheel. Um, I'll kind of let you know. I'll show you again how I have it all set up. But I think so far, so good. I mean, this is exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted to have Bluetooth, Spotify, Google Maps, my, all my contacts, everything. I mean, coming from the Tesla, I needed some version of what that car had. <laughs> and I think this will work. And now I'm really happy that we're swapping over to the Recaro seats. Bud connectors were used to splice in this. This is a connector for, I think, an aftermarket airbag, which is whatever. I'm sure it's fine and it'll work okay. But I think a better route is for us to just swap the main connector off of this guy onto here and not swap this entire harness from the old seat. That way we know uh, that most all of the harness is practically brand new. I found out from the guy I bought these from that the V wagon that this came out of had like less than 20,000 miles and they're untouched. So I'd rather just go with all good new factory stuff. We're gonna chop this one off. There we go. We've chopped this side off as well. And yeah, we checked the harness and everything is going to line up just fine. They used a slightly different color on some of these, but it's okay. It's all going to the same place. We're gonna solder the connector in so the heat shrink tubing is ready to go. You heat up the bottom of the wire and then melt the solder in just a little. That's all you need. And we'll melt the shrink wrap tubing on there, just like that. All right, three more to go. And here's our final result. Looks totally factory right in line with the other connectors. This seat is ready to go in. Carpets are all cleaned up. We shampooed all of these, so it all smells 
really good. But uh, this is where the car was hit. So before we get the seat back in here, I kind of want to do a little bit of exploration to see exactly what was done. It was very unclear from Hoovy, but he didn't, he just didn't know what exactly was replaced. This thing was wrecked, I think like five or six years ago, like 30, 40,000 miles ago. So it's been a long time, um, but we know it was hit in this area. And I was curious to see if this B pillar had been replaced. Oh, this is interesting. That VIN does not look like... Oh, yeah, that, that's black underneath. Yeah, that's definitely not our VIN. Oh, here's another VIN tag right here, 011. Okay, I bet you they got the doors, both doors. I know they were replaced um, and potentially this B pillar, but let's see if we can find where they cut it in. So most likely what happened was it was easier to cut in a good used B pillar and also the rocker along with it uh, than trying to make these doors line up after this was pushed in. So you can sometimes pull that out and make it work, but they're all just spot welded in. So it's also kind of easy in the world of body work to drill out all of these spots and just replace a part and they could have gotten it used as well. So they most likely did not get into the roof area or anything. So I would imagine they cut it in at some point. Yeah, these look factory, right, Peter? Yeah, these are these are all yeah. factory down to probably this one. And these are all factory welds. Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah, so, so then we could just yeah, find like a crack starts yeah, there. Okay. So I'd assume it's somewhere here. They probably cut it. Oh, let's um let's open this door. So right here, this is probably from a donor car, and they welded it to the factory metal because I don't I don't think it was that bad. I don't think it pushed it into the point where they had to replace the entire thing. Um, yeah, these are all factory, 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 factory. There's a little line right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine it'd be like right Oh, there. yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, they probably cut it in right. Oh, yeah. You can, there. Actually, you can see it from the backside. Oh. They're over. It's overlapping right in the seam there. Yeah. Yeah, you can see right here. So this top layer is from a donor car. That was probably the bulk of the repair work needed on this. Yeah, this. our suspicion was that the quarter panel wasn't touched. Oh, yeah, it's all the way down here. Yeah, this is factory up until this point. And then yeah, you can see starting there, going that way. Okay. All right, cool. So all this is original. Yeah. So, and this was done probably, you know, five, six years ago, something like that. I think the car lived mostly in a good weather state. There was absolutely no rust, like no surface rust, nothing. And when we were at Wizard's shop, uh, Peter and I inspected the hole underneath and uh, the floor and the unibody frame rails and everything like that look fine. So. Yeah, you know, this is this is a normal body shop repair, to be honest with you. This is not, not really anything to be worried about. All the airbags were replaced, and it was wrecked so long ago and been on the road for so long since then that I'm not, I am not concerned about anything, especially after driving this thing and hearing the supercharger whine. Everything just kind of goes out the window. Time to get our Recaro in. This is much easier with two people. Watch that steering wheel, Peter. Oh, how are we going to do this? Uh, you probably need to get up. There you go. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I'll pull this back and then you just steer the front end. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I think we're in both of them. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, I think our battery's finally getting low. Oh, yeah, I see the lights dimming. Oh, I love it. This is so good. Okay, this almost makes me forget about the fact that the other headlight lens is nowhere to be found. So that company was supposed to ship both of them. They only shipped one and then they said the other one was gonna be here and it's not, I don't know when it's coming. So that got messed up. This whole thing got messed up, um, but I found a brand new module and a piano black trim in good shape. Everything's ready to go. So that's on the way as well. Um, so in the next video, we're gonna finish everything. We're gonna have the calipers powder coated. I actually also ordered some brand new wheels for this thing. Uh, and we're gonna put the front end back together, the new headlight lens. We'll get this infotainment thing working and a lot more. This is gonna be a legit daily driver after the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you are happy about my decision to drive this instead of the Tesla. The Tesla won't be my last EV. I'm still really into EVs, but I think for now, this is gonna do just fine. So if you did enjoy the video, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video. Oh, blooper that, Max. Keep me at Alex. It's... <laughs>
not the right size, Peter. You told me it's eight. I didn't. Is it on camera? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, gotta get his gangster lean on. This is how he drives, pretty much like this. This is this is his driving position. That is not true. He looks out the back window. <laughs> definitely something worthy of a. Definitely something. It is locked. Or it just opened. Oh, that should be locked. Put it on the bloopers, Max. Bloopers aren't just things we don't want to show. They're still being shown if they're in the bloopers. <laughs> That's how I tell Max to put a bed. <laughs>